good day everyone, it's Caitlin and today we are making footwear for my wedding ensemble. Alright, so let's work on wedding footwear. So, uh, starting with shoes. Stockings I don't have to do anything to, they're already ready and done. I'll show them to you at the end. But for shoes, um, these I bought these from, oh goodness, it's not American Duchess, it is Amazon Dry Goods. And they have this nice little mid-century style slipper. And I'm just adding some silk ribbon to it. So, got most of it added. It only comes in this, or the shoe only comes in this one color. On the website, they sell it as light blue. You can very clearly see it is not blue. I've bought two or three of these slippers, and this is the color they come in. So if you were expecting to buy them and you wanted a light blue, they're not actually blue. They do dye extremely well. Just take the finish off, and they'll dye with any old leather dye. Anyway, so I have silk ribbon. I cut at 27 inches. No particular reason for that other than that's what made, that's what my other ones that I put ribbons on, uh, my black ones, that's what I did for that one. So that's, we're just kind of copy the same thing. And I'm using the holes that are already in the leather from the stitching. And I'm using that to put my needle through. So I'm not actually sewing any new holes. It just makes it super easy to attach the ribbons. And I go that way and then I'll go back again um, just to kind of make sure everything is really secure. And as far as how far over I'm sewing it, again, I measured my old shoes and I honestly do not remember how I got the measurement last time. But for me, I just took this that center seam that's right there and I measured over four and a half inches. And that's where I decided to put the ribbon. It's actually a really simple project adding ribbons to shoes. And it makes them look really nice. This particular uh, style crosses over, goes around my ankle, comes back in front and ties. Um, and that's what the 27 inches does, at least for my shape, or my leg size, and I, I don't know how, what all goes into that, but I like the way that the black ones work, so I decided to copy those exactly, just in white. So the only other thing we have really to do is to work on garters, which are going to be an early 19th to late 18th century style. Um, elasticized garters, but they're not actually elastic. It's metal springs um, that are put into silk and you can use it basically like elastic. So um, we're going to get that out and start working on that. Alright, so garters. Um, this is our last little bit of footwear. So um, I'll show you the stockings. We're not doing anything with the stockings. I just bought those. That was way easier. Um, and I quite frankly don't have time to knit stockings. So bought is great. Um, so garters, um, I have an original, uh, a picture of an original 1828 wedding ensemble. And so I had the dress and the shoes and I had garters in it. So I was like, I'm going to copy those. So this is what I came up with. Now hers were, um, sequins, but they were not really, uh, silver, but more of a coppery color. And she did like a red jewel in the center but red's not my color for my wedding, mine is blue. And I have a lot of other gold accents, especially in my jewelry, so I was like, I'm gonna do gold and blue. So I, um, basically other than that, it's mostly the same, except I am using for the, like, the, the stems, the stems, I'm using a silk embroidery floss, it's actually um, a Speedsmith, size E, and this is the gold color. It perfectly matches my sequins, by the way. Like, it really looks like gold but it's, it's just silk thread um the original used actual um a bugle beads basically they match the sequins um i just didn't feel like finding any that was going to like match the gold of the sequins perfectly so i decided to use this because it matches and uh, basically this is um is actually not a real sapphire it's an engineered sapphire which looks just like a real jewel and it um 
like it, it looks just like one and I think you can only tell under like a jeweler I think only a jeweler could really tell the difference and I just put it into a little setting that's a sewn on setting and I stitch it in and I just started putting the sequins around so the sequins I bought from sequins USA and um, sequins are period they weren't called sequins they were called spangles so um, you don't get the I call them fluted but the ones that uh, not only really designs but have like raised bits and lowers bits I don't actually know what you call those no you want the flat ones the very flat uh, sequins those are what you would have seen these are the three millimeter size I probably could have gotten the four millimeter size but this worked perfectly fine um, but yeah I'm just working on the last little bit of the embroidery so I have one garter completely embroidered it ended up being about six inches from border into the embroidery to the end of the embroidery um, so it'll be about six or seven it'll actually be about seven inches when I'm done because actually really almost eight which is right under my knee which is where I wear my garters is 16 inches so I need a garter that is slightly smaller than that so that it is tight and I think my springs that we're going to use for elastic are um, six inches so if this is eight inches or less that's perfect so it is going to be about an inch on this side about half an inch on this side so it'll be perfect but we're going to go ahead and add these sequins and I've just been picking one up with my finger putting it on my needle sticking that down and I've just been doing two stitches one on the top and one on the bottom of every sequin and I'm freehanding this embroidery because I couldn't be bothered to make out a pattern it's working well enough I suppose that feels like I'm not. I sent a picture of the embroidery to a group of friends yesterday and they made a joke about like Rhett pulling them off and tossing them and I was like uh-uh these are not getting tossed we are not doing a garter toss that is ridiculous I spent too much work on these garters to have someone else take them off and toss them these are staying on plus what am I going to do to keep my stockings up once we do toss them like I, I need these these serve a function alrighty so at this point <clears throat> I'm just doing the embroidery so Um, just a little stem stitch just to connect all the pieces and then I think we're going to go ahead and work on the uh, elasticized bit so uh, it's early 19th century elastic so it's not actually elastic it's metal springs inside silk that create kind of elasticized concept um, and I found some really nice springs on um, a website and I got them in so we're going to work on that and I am hand stitching all of this like I'm going to hand stitch this entire set of garters um, not because my entire wedding ensemble is hand stitched but because this is technically a circa 1800 to 1830 garter like I can wear this for living history later on don't know if I will because they're white and that just just asking to be stained but I can and if I ever did something really fancy and I wanted some really nice garters I could just go ahead and wear these so I think these are just gonna be my very fancy garters from here on out um, and I definitely don't want um, anything that's going to hinder me using them because if I end up doing something fancy and I needed some really nice garters I'd have to make a whole new set and I'm already doing all this embroidery so I might as well go ahead and make these correct to be used but yeah I'm just kind of working my way up so I'll go to this one next and then this one I'll hop up here and up here and then I'll do those and then I'll do my one long line down in the way I've been working on this. 
all right so we're ready to do the elasticized part and so I have here um, my little bit of elastic well what's going to be elastic so it's just two pieces of silk that I made some channels in so the original has like a little ruffle on either side and then it has six channels and I had enough um, springs to do the six but I kind of tested one and I pulled it out wrong and now I have a very um, so now I have a very bendy and unfixable spring and so because I only brought 12 and I needed 12 I can't do this anymore so so we're only going to use five um, springs instead of six but this is what they look like they're just little springs they have a little hook on the end well, not really a hook it's like a little circle bit but they're stretchy and they're metal so this is what we're going to use to make our um, Regency elastic so what I'm going to start with is putting the so yeah I just made the channels with a running stitch so it wasn't difficult I'm just going to stick it in there I found it easy to do it all at the same time so as far as how um, I guess long I made it so the um, springs are six inches and I cut the silk bit to 14 so it's a little over twice what the springs are um, and some of that is not like that's 14 inches to the end and I didn't do the sewing for the last inch because we're going to turn that end under and then half of this is going to be or half an inch of this is going to be uh, sewn up so it's really going to be uh, 12 and a half inches so about twice that of the springs so once I get this more or less oops there go my scissors, there go my scissors. that's okay so I'm going to push them all at the same time Once we get this all the way down, I can do a little bit of sewing to attach this end. So I love that these have the little, um, not even the little circle things at the end. Those are super helpful. So I'm gonna get it yeah, about half an inch in there. And grab my needle, and my thread. I'm basically just gonna make some very small stitches, almost like I was sewing in a hook and eye. Like just going around the little circle about four or five stitches per spring and this is just going to help to hold it in place and i'm catching all the layers um like the top and the bottom of the silk once i have this sewn i can continue with my um moving uh, this down but here I got this one finished. I have half an inch on this side that is not gathered, and I have about an inch and a half on this side that's not gathered. So that makes my well actually about an inch here and no, another half. So actually about an inch here and another half inch here. So that gives me my 14 inches that I needed. It's a little tight. I think I may have preferred to do it just one inch smaller than my actual measurements, but um, for a first try, I feel like this is pretty good, and they're still comfortable enough. I think I can wear them. So. Not a big deal. And I am not worried about getting these gathers very uh, evenly distributed yet. We're going to worry about that in just a minute. Right now I'm just trying to get them all the way through. So the same thing, I want to grab just the uh, little circle thing. do now is I need to finish this end. So I'm going to fold this in half. So it was one inch and now it's going to become half an inch. And I'm basically just going to stitch these two layers together just across just to hold this um, edge uh, together. At this point I'm going to pick the best looking side which is this side to be my front. And I have I need to measure it um, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and a half. 
Exactly, actually, that's weird. Okay. Um, piece of ribbon. And then I'm going to grab my um, little closure. And I have no idea what these closures are called. I spent a really long time looking for period appropriate closures. And I really wanted some other pearl ones. Um, like the originals that I see. Well, I couldn't find any. So I settled for these because they're close enough shape and they work the same way. And so that's what we're going with. So I just made a little section. And I'm going to stick this right on top of here. And just whip this on. And you want it stitched on the top of your garter. So to even out these gathers, I'm just going to pull on it. And as you pull, it becomes evenly distributed. So now I get to attach all of this. So I have, from the border, I have one inch on this side and I have two inches on this side. I'm going to take this end, right sides together, with my um, embroidery. And I'm just going to stitch this on very lightly. I just need a, um, a line, basically, is all I need. So it's not going to be like super good embroidery here, or sewing. I am just stitching this on, so I have a line on the other side, or a row of stitching. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lining, lay that over top, turn it around, and now I have a nice row of exactly where I need to stitch. So I'm going to make my small, nice, neat stitches now, back stitches. So now I have it all nicely stitched down, nice and pretty, very secure. That's the main point. You definitely want this to be secure. So I get to turn in these ends and basically make it match the uh, this part, the uh, elastic part. <laughs> and I'm going to just put a little um, pin in here. I'm kind of using my embroidery as a guide because I want it to be just a little bit wider than the actual embroidery. I don't want the embroidery at the very, very edge, but I want it pretty close to the edge. And I am could be helpful here. I just am too lazy to get up. Oh, I feel like I've earned some laziness. I did hand embroider all this. It's more or less even. Now I'm going to turn in this end, about half an inch, yeah, yeah, it's really easier when this is iron right here. So now I'm going to do the really fun job of just whipping this all the way around. Alright, now we're on the very last step for the garters, which is putting the other side of the um, closure on, so try and get this. So it's just the other piece, and I again put the ribbon on it, and this sits at the very edge. And I just have my needle in between both layers so that I don't see the thread until I pull it out. Now I'm sewing through both layers. Definitely want the most secure stitching I can do. So, because this is going to get quite a lot of stress because it's the closure. So now we have a finished pair of garters that completes our footwear, which is good because. I have other things I need to work on. 
and here's our finished footwear. So shoes with our lovely little ribbons that are everywhere. But yeah. Your little ribbons are garters, which I'm so proud of. Like really, really proud of. Because those are just cool. I'm actually really excited to wear them and hopefully not lose them for the you know wedding day. But I'm happy because they're, you know, of course, modeled after the originals. They fit my colors, and they turned out, and they work. So I wasn't entirely sure about the uh, elasticized garters. I've seen tons of originals, mostly French. Um, so I never really bothered to reproduce them, especially because I do a lot of, um, my earlier stuff is a lot in the lower class. So um, knitted garters and woven garters are the way to go. And so I never had any opportunity to wear something that fancy, and I was, I've always wanted to try them, so. Uh, I got the concept down. I actually wrote out, wrote out directions, like, last year about how to do that, um, without actually ever doing it myself. And so I finally had to follow my directions, and what do you know, they actually work. So, that's that, and I think they're beautiful. And of course the stockings. So these are cotton stockings, probably from American Duchess, although I've had them for a while and never wore them so I actually have no idea but they're just clocked stockings um, black because black is my fiance's favorite color so um, had to have a little bit of him in there I consider doing blue as well just because you know a lot of my accessories are blue but, but yeah that is overall that's my footwear and so we're getting close to having our accessories all done Next month, I think we're working on all the other accessories, so like hair accessories and jewelry and all that fun stuff. So definitely stay tuned for that. But if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday for our regularly scheduled Living History videos.